women! Is everybody in government just a criminal? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Her next book should be Eat, Pray, Go Fuck Yourself. <laughs> I'm Bridget Fettesy, and this is your dumpster fire for the week of June 9th to June 15th. And the unicorns dance while the world burns, world burns, world burns. Broadcasting to you from the suburbs of Texas. We're back. We're in effect. We're trying new things. We've got a new set, and we would love for you to subscribe to Phetasy.com to keep the lights on, get the unedited version of this the day before it drops. It drops on Sundays now once we get our workflow down. Sorry about last week. We're just getting used to all these new things. If you join us in the community, there are workouts. I'm back to doing workouts with the ladies, which is great. Summer's here. Get the buns lifted, ladies. It's just a great community of like-minded individuals. You can post about your dogs. We share recipes. There's writing prompts when I'm not absolutely drowning in work. There's lots of behind the scenes stuff. We're always posting pictures, stuff I don't post publicly. So join us. And it's really an easy way to support this show that you love and want to see continue through the next year of the election, which is coming. That's right. Don't forget to like, subscribe, touch my bells and buttons, tell your friends about us. It's really the only way anyone hears about us, although word of mouth is powerful. It's the original algorithm. Don't underestimate it. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Get my dad! Wookie, wookie, wookie! Starting it off with Troll Indicted. Trump was arraigned in Miami on 37 federal charges. You're going to jail. You're, <laughs> You're going, going to jail. jail. Only 37 charges? I tell you, the kids these days. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing about this. I don't know why I think it's hilarious. It's not hilarious, but it's kind of hilarious. We talked about this last week. Is everybody in government just a criminal? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't really know enough about this to weigh in because I haven't read shit about any of the charges. I'm too dumb to understand this, and I'm too uninterested in all of the tribal crap to, to care, really. I do care if our DOJ is being weaponized. It does seem a little bit unsettling that Biden's, you know, he's still the front runner for 2024. And we have, you know, many times now tried to indict this guy on things that I don't, again, I don't know. Are they nothing burgers? Was he sitting on his golden toilet trying to sell state secrets to Saudi? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe that's what he was doing. My theory is that they were all the briefings that he never read the entire time he was president. <laughs> He's like, oh, probably should have bombed them. I'm going to bomb the shit out of them. I love the idea of him having all of these state secrets and all of these boxes. And people are like, man, the Chinese nationals sure do use the bathroom a lot at Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> What's going on? I'm sure this has some, nothing to do with espionage and everything to do with narcissism. <laughs> with Trump always. It's, everyone always it's like applies so much more 3D, 4D chess to this guy. And it's really like, I, I, I wanted to keep them to remember what, how great I was. This is a great thing that I did. Remember the Supreme Court justices? I, they, they were excellent. I need reminders of this. I feel like this might be just an area where a rich person's cheap, too. Like he's, I think it's funny to imagine him just wiping his ass with all these documents <laughs> that he never read. The briefings he never read. Kiss my ass, America. My feeling about this is as long as he stays the way he's been, exactly the way he's been for the past 78 or so years, this will not affect him at all. He is Teflon Trump. This won't hurt him in the slightest. I mean, it is funny, too, because it, it's like he kept saying the deep state was going to come for him. And there does feel a little bit like, are you guys going to come for me? Are you guys going to come for me? I need you to come for me. How else are these people going to believe that the deep state was going to come for me? And then he takes all these documents and he's like, the deep state came for me. Yeah, well, no shit, buddy. You had fucking 
boxes of state secrets in your spare bathroom. I can't stop laughing just thinking about all of the Trump supporters chanting lock her up during all of 2016. I don't I there's just something funny about all of this. Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country yeah, because you'd be in jail. The fact and the imagery of a former president arrested by the same government. And then Hillary's weighing in and I'm like, Hillary, maybe maybe sit this one out. <laughs> maybe sit the rest of everything out in case you didn't get the hint. You're unlikable, Hillary. You're unlikable. <laughs> No one likes a woman in pantsuits. With a short haircut. <laughs> this isn't the 80s anymore, Hillary. <laughs> the girl boss era is over. With your shoulder pads. We've moved on to big boobs and trad wives on TikTok, okay? <laughs> girl power is over. Speaking of which. Patriarchy so crafty. A perfect segue. <laughs> Johns Hopkins has redefined the word lesbian to a non-man attracted to non-men. The definition for gay man still has not changed. I have been screaming, women! Women! What is the word? We've been screaming this. We have a four-year anniversary coming up this August since we started this insanely, ridiculously time-consuming, hard work, not even paying for the amount of hours that we spend on this show show four years ago and i have been screaming women! women ever since and it's only getting worse they were now the word is just not a word anymore now you're using non-man oh do not try and tell me women are not being erased in this whatever weird stupid moment we live in the stupidest times yeah is it the pantsuits? It's the pantsuits, <laughs> isn't it? Now you're like, well, it's not really that feminine. You don't really look like a woman in that. We're going to call you a non-man. And you might see a bulge or two. You look more like a non-man in that pantsuit with the short haircut. I don't know what's going on, guys, but it needs to stop. J.K. Rowling had a great tweet about it. Man, no definition needed. Non-man, formerly known as woman, a being definable only by reference to the male, an absence, a vacuum where there is no manness. It is insane. It's insane. Poor lesbians. They're really, they're the soft underbelly of this entire movement. Hey, I'm lesbian. I thought you were American. They seem like an easy target or something. Everybody knows lesbians are just transphobes who won't suck a lady dick. That's that's what it feels like to me. Lesbians are non-men who won't suck lady dick. Johns Hopkins. Yeah. This is a respected like school. This is bullshit. It is bullshit. This does feel like the they're like, well, we're not we wouldn't ever get away with that with men and or gay men, but women are soft and pliable enough to kind of bully them into submission. We'll just make them be non-men. I cannot express to you how stupid everything is and insane. How, how have so many people gone along with this? All of it, the gender affirming care, the, which is not gender affirming care. The men and women aren't different. Hey Ben, are girls and boys the same? No, they're not, no, okay, no, okay, next question. <laughs> like if you, now is the time, you're five years too late speaking up by the way. But if you have any courage left in your system and soul and you haven't been completely demoralized by how insane everything is and you won't lose your job for saying for saying biological men don't belong in women's prisons. Yeah. For saying biological men shouldn't be beating the shit out of women in their sports. How dare you? Then speak up say something push back against this it's just as bad if you're just kind of silently going along with all of this stuff it has gotten this far because people have just been like well that's crazy and kept their head down as an entire nation buries its head in sand but where will we find enough sand for everyone Women! pride parade of morons pride parade of morons Rose Montoya, a trans influencer, freed the nipple on the White House lawn. She has since been banned from the White House. <laughs> Hi, Mr. President. It is an honor. France rights are human rights. A 
Are we topless at the White House? This is the bullshit that I'm talking about. They will be called out on their insanity and then they'll act the White House. They will be will act like, oh, we didn't know about that. And then ban her. You invited this trans woman to your pride parade celebration. And then when they showed their man boob, lady boobs, they you ban them and say that it's not appropriate or what disrespectful. Okay, first of all, let's not start talking about respect on the White House. I'm sure that's like on the very bottom of the list of things that have disrespected the White House in that building. And secondly, what do you think a pride parade is? Have you been to a pride parade? Clearly you haven't. And finally, I guess in 2023, men have nicer titties than women. Are we talking at the White House? This is where we are in 2023. Men, they were nice boobs. And so, yeah, she's like all upset because she got banned and was like, I didn't mean any disrespect. And then tried to say that it was a free the nipple thing if I was a man and had done that. Like, yeah, no shit. Welcome to being a woman. You showed your boobs in public and people freaked out. Oh, my God. You are a woman. You don't get to just keep your male privileges and transition to a woman and have nicer tits than me. That's not how this works. This is the way the world has been forever. Many of us have pushed back against it. There's no point. It's never going to change. You need to get down in the mud with us, (laughs) lady. It's just like a white man to be upset with the fact that he can't retain the parts of privilege of being a man while becoming a woman. And then all the conservatives came out and they were like, that tranny had nice boobs. And they were they were writing this, which when they say it, it does feel derogatory. You know, there's, yeah. uh, there's I can see why the, that has become a slur. There is that derogatory vibe to it. Yeah. And... Also, it was so ironic. My whole entire feed was flooded with boobs and it was all conservative media. It's always like pastors who end up banging hookers. It's always the like conservative dudes who are weirdly obsessed with trans women that end up, you find them in a freaking Motel 6 getting pegged by some hooker in five years. Oh, it's always so much projection and you guys are, you're creeping me out you need to stop being such perverts i know there's sarcasm but it's still like you guys are weirdly obsessed with this and it's it's beyond the reason that you know feminists are obsessed with it like oh you're taking over women's spaces it's like you're all a little fascinated by the lady dick and it's a little apparent (laughs) Okay, moving on to what is happening. Newly amended California bill could punish parents who refuse to affirm their child's gender identity. So this particular bill adds the very important factor that affirming a child's gender identity is in their best interest. Because if you have a seven-year-old being able to articulate that they believe that they are not the same gender um, as they are biologically, then it should be affirmed and through care, it should be determined. Our children should be affirmed. And this is saying that you have to include gender affirmation as a part of it. <laughs> this actually should have been breaking Bridget because A, how the F did this bill even get as far as it got? As of recording, it has passed through the House of Re- Representatives, through the Senate Judiciary Committee, and it's moving to the Senate floor where there is still an opportunity for Gavin Newsom to veto it. But the fact that it's even made it this far it just shows you how insane California is. And never every story that comes out of California makes me so glad I love I, this is bananas if you don't say yes to your kid who's like i might be a girl because they learned it from their weird teacher who's inappropriately talking about all these things with them and keeping it a secret from the parents also very sketchy because you're allowed to do that you're allowed to just completely call your child a different name at school and never tell the parents this is going to be the darkest chapter in the psychology books not even 10 years from now 
You have people, there was another lawsuit that was filed yesterday. They put her on hormones at 12, got her on cross-sex hormones, got a mastectomy, all under the age of 18. This thing that allegedly never happens, now people are suing because they're like, why the F? I don't even think you can get a tattoo with a parent's permission in some states. Until you're 18. Yeah. Yeah. A f***ing butterfly tattoo. You can't even get that. And they're like, but you can cut your d*** off, little boy. What? Or your boobs. Ooh, or yeah. your boob. Or stop puberty because you can pause it and not tell them that you're never going to probably get an orgasm again. Your genitalia. It. This is f***ing bananas if you are on board with this i you are you've been tricked you i would like to think you've been tricked and you don't actually know what all of this means you hear gender affirming care and you think oh that's something that's good for these children who have body dysphoria which by the way is a very small percentage of children not anywhere near what we're seeing now who actually have body dysphoria and then you're gonna tell me that this is good for them, but you can't even tell me what that actually means. People need to push Biden to say what that means. When he's like, oh, gender affirming care, and he's slurring. America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was gonna put him, uh, foot, foot. Someone needs to ask him what that means. What does that mean, sir? What exactly does gender affirming care for children look like? Because they've started banning this in every other freaking Western country. They've paused all of this stuff. How are we in the United States so far behind? Oh, right. Because it's billions of dollars of medicine. And you're getting people hooked on big pharma's dick, sucking it for the rest of their life. This is what happens. You get on this train, you're never off. Yeah. Ever. So what this bill says is essentially if you don't affirm little Lucy's desire to be a boy when she's 13, you can be accused of child abuse. <laughs> child. <laughs> like, yeah, I wanted to be trans when I was 10. A transformer. I'm not going to conversate with you. I'm not going to invest time. I think it's converse. Huh? Just say talk. We came from a generation where we got physically abused. We were spanked. We were taught lessons the hard way. <laughs> I can't imagine going and reporting my parents to the police for even spanking me. Now you can go report your parents for not addressing you by the right pronouns. This is insanity. Yeah, this is going to be a big issue in custody battles. Yeah, um, huge issue in custody battles. And requiring that parents must be affirming of a child's gender identity if they are to be judged fit for providing the health, safety, and welfare of the child. This is insanity. I cannot believe this bill is even... I mean, I can believe it because California is like a mental asylum and the inmates have completely taken over the asylum. Completely. For all I know, you're <laughs> crazy as a loon. Get your kids out of California. Get them out. The fact that this even went as far as it did, it like my friend has a theory that they're going to basically push this and then have Gavin veto it so that he looks like some moderate. But it's still like that is exactly how you use power. You go bananas 100 percent and then you dial it back to like, you know, 85 percent. It's already the kidnapping state. You can already take your kid there. It's so it is off the rails in that state. There's already some kid who's like, if you don't take me to Disneyland, I'm going to say I'm trans and you're not affirming my gender. I'm going to tell the state on you. And I'd be like calling their bluff like, well, good luck in foster care, kid. <laughs> Some little ass out there is absolutely doing that. Some little whippersnapper is doing that right now. I 100% would have been like, I'm going to get out of this family once and for all. Never woke enough. <sighs> Eat, pray, love author pulls her next book over backlash to Russian setting. Guys, it's fun. Wednesday, okay? It's Thursday, actually. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, uh, Wednesday. But we we wrote all of this. It was done. Our board was full by Wednesday. <laughs> Can you slow down with this crap? 
It's exhausting having to cover all of these liberal nonsenses that are going on. This story's crazy because Elizabeth Gilbert, who wrote Eat, Pray, Love, she's a pretty famous author. She wrote a whole book that takes place in the 1900s in Siberia in this novel that she wrote. She was just so excited. Imagine like, do, 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 do. guys, I wrote a novel. It takes place in 1900 Siberia and it's critical of industrialization, something, you know, or seeing the effects of that and the Soviet regime. And everyone's like, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you? you miss how dare you they review bombed her with one star reviews on goodreads goodreads who apparently has like armies of unfuckable hate nerds who just can't wait to take the next author down these are all just wannabe writers who can't get out of their own way and write a book (laughs) Which sounds like me a little bit. I swear I didn't hate bomb this. And they're running to go bully this woman. And she caved to this and pulled her book. It was done. Yeah. And it wasn't like through the hey, editing guys, process, like all of it, like about to go to print. You thought your cousin who reviews P.F. Chang's was bad? No. Hey, I'd like to volunteer to kick you in the vagina. Where do I sign up? Mm mm. The Goodreads reviewers have are the absolute worst. Can't we've covered stuff like this before? You can't burn books if they never get published. Oh, oh lovely! It's the the darkest. This is the darkest. Just let people make their art, you crazy lunatics! This is so. It's ironically so communist to yeah. do something like this. Yeah, people were worried that the Russian setting would romanticize Russia. Even though she's being critical of Russia in the book. And supposedly she's like, it was all the Ukrainian readers. I'm like, how are they writing reviews about this stupid book? They're in like getting bombed by Russia right now. (laughs) They're in bunkers on Goodreads. They're giving you one star reviews. Yeah, no, I'm not buying this. This is a bunch of like Americans with Ukrainian flags in their freaking Twitter profile who are like, how dare you? These are the modern day inquisitors. Mm -hmm. They're a modern day mob. It is insane. She was like, it was insensitive for me to release a book. And she did this whole video. And I seriously thought she was going to say to release a book at all. Being that there's, you know, a war going on in one part of the world. What is happening? I I don't. Somewhere. Cheryl Strait is like, yes. (laughs) (laughs) And people will. Ch- clap for her. Yeah. And they'll, she'll get accolades. Right. And she'll be like, I've learned. I've been. They all say the same messed up thing, too. It is like when you see a Chinese dissident di- get disappeared and then they reappear and they're like, I love China. China's been great. I think it's all awesome here. Nothing ever went wrong. I have no issue. It's the same weird script. Right. It's like I've been schooled. I've, I've been, been I've educated. Learned, I've been educated. Yeah, I've learned. I've, I've learned so much. I've been educated. I didn't know. As a result, I'm making a course correction and I'm removing the book from its publication schedule. I, I can't. I would. It is. I know she's written books, so maybe this isn't a big deal for her. But to write a book, a whole book, a a book, (laughs) not even like one of these political freaking modern day, which is hard to. But, you know, I there's a lot of like culture war books that you can kind of bang out in like six weeks or so. This is a novel. You got to come up with a plot and you got to invent characters. They need to interact and you have to come up with a whole story. And you have to do research into the setting and all of it. And there and then you're just like, I've learned. I'll pull it. What? God, nobody has any backbone anymore. I'd be like, get fucked. I'm publishing my book. My, her next book should be Eat, Pray, Go Fuck Yourself. <laughs> Now let's check the weather with Diana Alvarado. Humedad del Pacífico se continúa infiltrando hacia nuestro territorio. Eso nos dejará la probabilidad de precipitación para los próximos días. Eh, ya de hasta un 50%. Thank you, spicy Diana. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, touch my bells and buttons, and make sure you tell at least one person this week about your favorite show, Dumpster Fire.
<laughs> okay, moving on to everything is racist. Former Philly Starbucks manager wins $25.6 million after being fired for being white. This is a funny... Actually, when you dig down into this story, it's hilarious because I don't know if you guys remember about the two black men who were arrested for for existing. We've arrested a black man who was snooping around the old Jefferson estate. Did you choke him? Yes. Did you shoot him? Yes. So what's the problem? They were at a Starbucks. They got arrested by because they apparently were like loitering because they were waiting for somebody for a meeting and they hadn't ordered anything and they tried to use the bathroom and someone called 911. So they got arrested. Starbucks had egg on their face. They made apologies. They settled with those two men for an undisclosed amount outside of court because they didn't want to litigate that. So they paid them off. And then they closed. You might remember all the Starbucks were closed for one day for diversity, equity and inclusion training. And they fired this woman who was like a regional manager of Starbucks just to kind of. Well, what basically what she said was they fired her to essentially make an example out of her. Someone's head has to roll. Right. And so she took them to court. And the black manager who was at the store that day when they called 911 actually testified on her behalf and said, this was definitely racially motivated because they didn't fire me, who's actually working at the store. And she wasn't even at the store when this happened. And then they tried to say that they hi- they fired her for being incompetent, which they could not prove to the jury. And she was awarded $25 million and $600,000 compensatory damages. And now she wants more for um, lost pay, which is like, come on, lady. You got $25 million. Yeah. Like, this was a unanimous jury decision, too. Yeah, they couldn't even convince one person. The reason I think this is hilarious is this is just how these culture wars and things end up costing these companies. They, how much money did they lose for closing their stores for a day, first of all? Probably billions of dollars. <laughs> Secondly, this has cost them like $100 million at this point, this incident. It's it's crazy. They didn't have to fire her. It underscores why these companies are more and more hesitant to wade into the culture wars, even if it's good for their ESG scores. They're starting to be like, this isn't worth it because like you saw with Bud Light, you can't win. You're going to you're going to make everybody mad in the end. Finally, a win for the whites. <laughs> Our eight-year losing streak is coming to an end at last. (laughs) I was worried. Then we have Siri, please take my life. Amazon Alexa hears racist remark and shuts down a man's entire smart home for a week. This is insane. He couldn't, I think he got locked out of his house because he had like a whole smart house and he got locked out of all his devices. And this is, but we live in a dystopia. We live in a Black Mirror episode, guys. This is crazy. First of all, this is why I never have any of that crap around. I hate Alexa. I don't. I know men. Lo- men love this stuff. Uh-huh. They will absolutely be lining up to have Elon put a chip in their brain. They're going to be the first ones. They want a digital chip so they can just swipe. It's all just convenient and easy. You take drugs, Danny? Every day. Good. So what's the problem? Until. An Amazon driver thinks they heard something racist and gets your entire life put on lockdown by a corporation. We've covered stuff like this before and it's going to get worse. The more, more and more of your life you outsource to these corporations, like good luck if you just sold all of your DNA to Blackstone. They own you now, by the way, because... Blackstone just bought Ancestry.com. Another thing I've never gone down the rabbit hole, (laughs) never done. So the Amazon Echo had some sort of like pat response to someone dropping off a package at the house. Like, thank you. Have a nice day or something like that. Yeah. What did it think? I want to know what it what this driver thought he heard. And this is a black man in a predominantly black neighborhood. Right. The owner of the house was black. And it turned out there was no one home at the house. And he was like mad and thought he heard something. Are you just this? This is is a very strange story for many reasons. It just shows you how much power Amazon has that they can lock you out of your house, lock you out of all of your accounts. And this dude is still considering being a customer of theirs. Thank you, sir. May I have another? He 
still hasn't canceled his Amazon Echo. He's like, I'm considering canceling my subscriptions. I know I was digitally hate crimed, but I'm still considering keeping my Amazon account. They can lock you out of your house. They can lock you out of your phones, all of your devices, and you'll still be their customer. That's how much power Amazon has. They have too much power. There's no other game in town, though, who can compete with them. It's so sketchy. The Amazon thing is sketchy, too. It's all sketchy. All of these tech companies are too powerful. We should have done an RIP for Uncle Ted. Ted Kaczynski died. And um, I hate to say it, but he called all of this. Look, his methods were not great, but... (laughs) But he did see this coming. He did see all of this coming. We don't have to go there. I mean, you're not wrong. I love the idea of this guy being like, I refuse to subject myself to this technological tyranny. I better order a lockpick. Ooh, Amazon can have me one in eight hours. We're all pussy whipped by Amazon. Every one of us. I've tried to quit. I've tried to quit. I can't quit you, Amazon. Dumpster diving. What's next? In the dumpster. What if I was just like... (laughs) The NCAA has a hot girl problem. (laughs) This is the funniest story. The NCAA is mad that the hot girls are making more money than the actually talented athletes. Okay. (laughs) First of all, the NCAA has a lot of nerve talking about who's getting paid what, considering that they just started paying athletes like two years ago. So... Maybe just sit this one out, NCAA, for you to be judging what other people are getting paid. Welcome to also hot privilege. It's a thing. And not only that, these were hot blonde twins. This is who you're talking about. In case you didn't know, above white privilege sits the most privilege of all. And it is hot blonde twin privilege. (laughs) They've been making more money and getting more attention than everyone for thousands of years. There's nothing more privileged than hot blonde twins. Hot blonde twins won the genetic lottery. They are the peak of hot privilege and the peak of all privilege on earth. And if we didn't have lonely dudes jerking off to hot chicks, there would be no viewership at all, NCAA. Then we have Taylor Swift fans are wearing adult diapers to her concerts. I mean, yeah, I'd probably wear an adult diaper to a Taylor Swift concert. Because they don't want to miss a moment. They don't want to miss a song to go pee. I wouldn't want to miss a moment either, Taylor. I love you. (laughs) That's where I really go with this. Like, I wouldn't want to miss a moment. I've heard what people have had to go through. They've got to, like, sell their firstborn son to Ticketmaster. They've got to wait in line. they got to get pissed on by some executives who are just raking it in. And now, of course, you don't, you don't want to wear a diaper, so you don't miss one moment. But there's just something very unsettling about the idea of someone just taking a pee or pooping next to you while they're standing next to you at a concert. <laughs> You can tell when someone's pissing, they gotta look. May I go to the bathroom first? You're like, you're pissing yourself, aren't you? (laughs) (laughs) It's hard to pee and do other things Uh other than scroll on the phone. Her fans are psycho. I got it, though. Father fakes his own death to teach his family a lesson and shows up to funeral in a helicopter. To be fair, he didn't do this to his wife and children. They were in on the joke. What? This is why these our monkey brains can't handle the technology, because this is all just like for attention on TikTok. And just attention, but it's really it feels like a stunt. He flew in in a helicopter. And with a camera at his crew. funeral with a camera crew, yeah. which is just the most narcissistic thing I've ever heard because he didn't feel like he was getting invited to events and got getting enough attention from his family. I mean, Jesus Christ, you wouldn't last one day in my <laughs> Irish Catholic family. <laughs> you got to fight for your attention where I come from. It's not just given to you. That's like the cruelest thing to do to someone, too. Yeah. They're, they're, 
caught up in all this remorse and regret, and then you just land in your helicopter and you're like, gotcha. <laughs> like it's a America's funniest home videos. Now that's what I call a joyride. <laughs> this is this is sick. This is actually sick. You're a psycho who needs too much attention. Breaking Bridget. Popular Call of Duty gamer was banned for tweeting, leave little children alone. He said they should leave little children alone. That's the real issue. That was the exact tweet. And it was in response to, we covered it last week, the Glendale, all the parents and right, kind of getting into the scuffle with Antifa. He was responding to a quote tweet about this issue. And he said they should leave little children alone. That's the real issue. And then Call of Duty took his skin down. I don't understand. I'm not a gamer at all. First of all, this guy made like $6 million in 2019. I learned this today, Nick Merckx. And I wanted to immediately jump off of my <laughs> top floor. <laughs> How can you tell kids that they can't make money being gamers? He's making so much money. He's one of the top gamers. And he got booted because apparently they, because of the incident, like this is bananas it wasn't even like he said it at a promotional event for call of duty this was something a free citizen in the united states freely said on twitter.com and you're getting booted a huge creator so now people are all hashtagging call of groomers and by the way people who are behind this mobs call of duty liberals because this is the people who you want to back yourself into the corner where you're defending pedophilia what exactly is wrong with this statement you want to be the party of pedophiles oh oh <laughs> you already are <laughs> i'm telling you right now liberals listen very closely to me i see the writing on the wall you're backing yourself into a corner and you're not going to be able to get out of it it's not like he said anything homophobic he said they should leave the children alone and that's now a controversial statement how did we get here not to mention the fact that what i've heard goes on when people are playing call of duty and the shit they say <laughs> yeah I mean, aside from all the like slurs that get thrown and racial Twitch, shit, that's just how these dudes are all talking to each other. It's it's like gamer culture. But aside from that, this seems again very inquisitory. It's very like this is not good because what you're saying is somebody can't say they should care about the kids. This is not good. Yeah. You're backing yourself into a corner, libs, leftists, whatever you want to call yourself, people who are pro banning him for this. And it's not a corner you're going to be easily able to find your way out of because you're seemingly more and more the anti children party. There is only one thing worse than a rapist. Boom. A child. No. Like how the American flag is now associated with conservatives. You let them have the American flag and now you're letting the conservative party have caring about the children. This is this is not going to go the way you think it's going to go. It's so dumb and it's so unsettling because why? Maybe maybe they are the party of pedophiles. Fantasy news. We made it. We did it. Another week. Do I not smile enough during this? Because uh, it's so darkly hilarious, the times we live in. Join us at Fetacy.com for an unedited version of Dumpster Fire that will drop the day before we launch the edited version on all of our platforms. We're also launching it on Twitter now, too. So go find us there if you want to watch it there. But I suggest watching it really anywhere. Rumble, YouTube, and get the unedited version at Fetacy.com. You can subscribe. It is a great way to support your favorite show and also get a lot of extra content. If you want to keep track of all the things we are up to, please go to bridgetfetacy.substack.com, subscribe to our free newsletter. We put out a little newsletter every Friday that just puts all of our content that we put out for that week and anything that might be upcoming into it. So it's all in one place for you to read and consume and have in, in an easy to access place. Because we put out a lot of content. It's crazy. Walk-ins, welcome, factory settings, letters from the politically homeless. 
We'd love to hear from you on that, by the way, especially moving into a election year. I want to thank everybody who makes this show possible. Thank you, Cousin Maggie. Thank you, Bridget. For all of the editing and hard work. Thank you, Dave Yates, Better Fantasy, Ben Howe, Sammy Flaps and Fold for research, editing, writing, and all of the things. And thank you to our audience, to subscribers, to commenters, to all the people who make this worth doing. We actually got a super awesome email from a couple who said Dumpster Fire saved their marriage. And that, I can't tell you, I was like, should I do Dumpster? I'm always kind of like, ah, you know, should I do it? And then I got emails like that. And I'm like, no, we've got to keep doing this. It's good for me, but it seems like other people enjoy us making fun of the insanity too. Thank you, Zen Pro Audio, for all of our audio needs. If you get the hankering to start a podcast, go to a small business for your for your audio equipment or your home entertainment center or whatever. Support small businesses. And thank you to our sponsor, Sheath Underwear. We love you, Sheath. I can't live without you. Let's cleanse your palate with the internet is glorious. Down the, the highway, you know, uh, right in front of the, the, the beach. Yeah. Or, you know, the water. Just the or something. I forget what it's called. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. This has been your dumpster fire for the week of June 9th to June 15th. I'm Bridget Fetessy. Now make me rich! Like those ladies with the boobies. <laughs>